Hey, Hickok here. We're going to do another techniques and tips uh, video. This one is going to be on trigger control and, and sight control, sight picture and that sort of thing. Nothing too in-depth. I've got a couple of things here I think that could really help, uh, help you. I know it helps me and I need it a lot. One of the things that we all struggle with more than maybe anything else, you know, we worry about the technique of our stances and all that and grip and how we're holding our fingers and our pinky and our thumb and all that, whether our little toes in the right place when we shoot. But, you know, the most important thing I think is to good shooting is that those sights remain on the target when that hammer or striker hits the primer. You know, and following through with that, uh, that makes way more difference than anything else. I always laugh when I see threads on the internet about accuracy of handguns and which handguns more accuracy. And you know, you see those comments yourself all the time about how a particular pistol is not very accurate or not as accurate as another one. It, it's so funny a bit to me because they're all more accurate than we are. So uh, those are pretty funny. The thing that makes the big difference uh, regarding that accuracy when you're standing and shooting is whether or not or how well you can keep those sights right where you want that bullet to go all the way through the trigger pull and until that hammer hits the primer as I say. So uh, doesn't matter might have a perfect weaver stance feels great to me got my arm just right my fingers in the right place I'm right on that target I'm locked in like a rock and I pull that trigger and click whoop, and I jerk it you know, throws that bullet off inches or feet, depending on your distance, doesn't it? So that's the thing we all struggle with. I struggle with it. How many times have you shot a revolver? It happens more often with a revolver, I think, because you shot six and you thought there was another one. You thought you shot five. And so you're actually bearing down on a target. Maybe you made some pretty good shots. And so you're ready to shoot that uh, sixth one, you think, but you already fired six. And click. You get a click. And what happens? You discover you just about hit your toe with the muzzle of the gun so you discover you're jerking the trigger you know it's just built in can't discover that if you're experiencing the recoil you don't you don't see it it's covered up by the recoil and the blast so you might be flinching on every single shot you look at your target and you're seeing bullets all over the place you don't know what's going on it's my technique I'm not standing right or or I got the wrong grip on this gun and that may be true but it might be you're jerking the trigger you know, you're, you're, uh, you're slinging those sights off the target the last instant because you're anticipating the recoil and the noise, the blast and all that sort of thing. It's just humanly, it's just what we do as humans. You know, it, it's a, that's why shooting is such a challenge, especially a handgun. You're, you're, you're taking a machine here and you're trying to make something very precision happen, a very precision trigger break perhaps. All that is very technical and very precise. And yet, right at the most important instant, you get an explosion going off in your hand, you know, so and maybe in your ears. So that's what makes it the challenge. And that's what I want to talk about. Doesn't matter if you're shooting weak hand and you feel really awkward and you've got a bad stance or a bad grip, maybe you think, and it just feels horrible. But if those sights are right where you want that bullet to go, when that trigger breaks, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, you might be pulling that trigger with your thumb of the wrong hand. I don't know. I could probably take this gun, put a live round in it, and pull that trigger with my thumb. Maybe I ought to demonstrate that. It might hurt myself. But I, I might put, might make the very best shot of the day. As long as that was a thumb shot. As long as those sights are where they're supposed to be when that trigger breaks. Okay? Most important thing. I think one of the uh, uh, things that helps me, I shoot revolvers a lot, and I like double action revolvers you've seen me shoot those in some of the videos unless it's a really hard kicking revolver it's not as much fun to shoot at double action you know what i mean if you've done that but uh, this is a little model an old model 19 you know i can fire it single action if i want but i'm going to fire it double this this helps in a lot of ways because you're pulling that trigger back and you're having to keep your sights on that target and boom till that hammer falls and i think that in itself helps to some extent it's a it adds to the challenge but I'm watching that sight right in the middle of that steel target all the way through that hammer fall. Doing it on that one too. You know, that's kind of what you have to do. If you've ever picked up a revolver or a gun that has a horrible trigger, it's really stiff, really hard, has a long pull, shouldn't matter. Keep those sights right on the target. As you pull that thing back, 
and it's going to break eventually and when it does those sights should still be right on the target. Right? That's our goal at least anyway. Uh, easier to talk about than it is to do. Uh, it's something we all struggle with. I do. I catch myself you know, jerking a little bit or dipping the, the barrel if I come up on an empty chamber and didn't expect it. You know, what's the old saying about the, the two loudest or, or worst sounds you don't want to hear is a click when you meant to hear a bang or a bang when you thought it was going to be a click or something like that. So it, it's that kind of thing. Uh, you're, you're expecting a bang and when it clicks, it, you know, it catches you. It reveals the flinch. And that's what we want to catch. So anyway, that's the main tip on, in this video. I'm not going to talk about sight picture that much. You know the sight picture. Whatever gun you're shooting, if it's a Glock, they generally shoot right on. If not, they shoot just a little above, a six o'clock hold. You know your gun. Uh, you generally fill the rear notch with the front sight. You know, just about every Glock I have, that's that's the way they sight, the way they hit. You know, if you're, uh, you level up the front sight with the rear sight, wherever you put that, bang, that's where they're going to hit. And as I've pointed out before in lots of answers to your questions, my subscribers, uh, when I do the really long range shooting at 230 yards with the Glock, I, I put half of that front sight up above the rear notch instead of leveling it up. That's what I do, and then I put the front sight on that target. Now, easier said than done, but that's what I tend to do. I don't just shoot above the target. All right, what I want to do here is show you a little uh, a tip, give you a little tip that might help you. It helps me because it, even knowing what's coming up, I, I uh, tend to flinch sometimes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some dummy rounds. I make these. Uh, you can buy some. What I do, since I load, these are nine millimeters, you see the, there's no primer. Not only is there no primer, there's no powder, and I have also drilled out the, the back of it, so they're, they're totally safe. But uh, I have uh, some of these I've made, and I have some live rounds in here. You'll see they're live. I put, uh, what I put, three or four, forget camera man, but I've got, I think, three uh, dummy rounds in this tray with, uh, with what, 12 live rounds. I do some quick math there. So what I'm going to do is load this magazine of 15, and this is what I advise you to do. Get some dummy rounds. Oops, I'm not going to look. Forgot, sorry. Uh, don't want to lose my credibility. So I'm not going to look at this tray, and uh, I can, can't tell by the feel at all, of course. So I'm going to load these 15 bullets and mix them up. And when I end up uh, with this magazine loaded, I'll have three that will not fire. So when I, I shoot, this, is, I'm just going to get a click. And this is one of the best ways, I think, to uncover your, your flinch or your jerk if you have it. Now, if when you pull that trigger and all you get is a click and that front sight doesn't move, well, you're in good shape. You're probably a really good shot. Uh, there we go. Uh, but for most of us, quite often, we're going to find that, that that front of that uh, gun, that muzzle, that uh, front sight's going to move. And should it move? No. Ideally, uh, when I, for example, I know this gun's unloaded, and so when I hold it right in the middle of that paper target and pull that trigger, boom, it should be just like that. That's what, <laughs> that's what I want. That's what you want. When you're shooting a magazine such as this one, loaded randomly with, double, uh, with uh, dummy rounds, when you come up on a dummy, of course, it should be something like this. Bam! Bam! Good hits. And then all of a sudden, click! Nothing moves. The front sight's just still locked right in there. Now, if you get to that point, you're a better man than I, Gunga Den. I'll tell you, because I still have, I have trouble with it. So, but anyway, it's, it's a, however I do today. And if I flinch and hit my foot in the break my big toe with the muzzle, I'm flinching so hard or jerking the trigger so hard. Uh, this, this is a useful exercise, believe me. Uh, so get some dummy rounds and do this. Now, I'm, I'm probably going to really demonstrate this well uh, because I will do what we always do. So here we go. I've got five, no, three dummy rounds in here somewhere. And I'm going to get up here. I'm going to sight right in the middle of that paper. And <laughs> I'm going to try not to flinch. Ooh, not too bad. That was one of the dummies. All right. Other than the guy holding the gun, right? All right. Here we go again. Woo! Bullet.
think I flinched a little bit. I'm not sure. Just a pad. Okay. We got one more in there somewhere. Yep, there he was. That's weird. I'm not sure I flinched. I think I kind of whoop, gave it a little bit of that. All right. I'm kind of riding with it. Oh, that was the last round. All right. So I was really focused, and uh, I put most of those bullets where I wanted. But that's a, a really nice uh, drill for you to do. I've done those with the 40 caliber as well. And I hand load, and you know I've got a shed and tools and stuff. So I've drilled those out. Those are 40 caliber rounds. They've got holes in them, and they're dummies as well. Uh, so I would recommend. I don't know why I do that. I could just go buy some. But uh, I highly recommend you get some of those dummy rounds and do that. Get a friend if you can't trust yourself or you can't, uh, you can't load without watching each one of them or something. Get somebody else to load the magazine for you and then do that every, every now and then because that's what it comes down to. Uh, trigger jerk. And if you're a right-handed person, you know the drill. You know what's going to happen. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say it. You, you see the threads. If you go into the forums on the Glock Talk or anywhere else, I got a nine, Glock 19 last week that shoots left. You know, shoots low left, and everybody diplomatically tries to convey what the truth probably is. It could be your sights are off, but 99% uh, of the time, it's that trigger jerk. Because if you're right-handed, boom, you're probably going to put those bullets down at about seven o'clock. You know, eight o'clock. If you're left-handed, you know, in the other other direction. Uh, so. That might help you more than anything, but those sights have to be right on that target. If, if you are ever uh, surprised by an empty chamber and there's any movement in your front sight, well, then you're doing that on every shot. Does that make sense? You're doing it on every shot, probably. So, so if you're having trouble doing what I just did, and, and I, you saw I think I flinched on one there and I was kind of getting a little movement myself. So if you're struggling at all, even when you know there's gonna be some dead rounds, what do you think maybe we're doing sometimes when, uh, I don't know, just a bad day, when we're having a bad day of shooting, we're probably flinching on every shot and we just don't know it. We don't see it. There's no evidence of it because we're covered up by the blast and recoil. All right. So that's my tip uh, as far as trigger control inside. I don't know how big a tip it is. Uh, you just got to control the trigger, whatever it takes. You have to. The sights have to stay on the target. It's just like shooting a basketball. If you've ever played sports, you know, follow through is one of the most important things. And that's essentially what you're doing when you are trying to keep those sights on that target. And it would probably also help as you shoot to hold those sights right where you put the bullet. Just keep them there, you know. Because if you're moving it too fast, as that bullet's leaving a barrel, it's not going to work for us, is it? All right, so that's my tip. And hopefully that'll prove useful. Uh, I didn't come up with that my own, my own self. I've, I've got that from other people. Uh, so it's not original with me, but it is a, a useful thing you might want to do. So, so, so important, more so than stance or grip or anything else. The inherent accuracy of the gun. Sights have to be where you want them to be when the firing pin hits the primer, okay? So, y'all have a good day and I hope you get a chance to try that. Take care.